Hello and welcome to another Top 5 here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I am Brandy. I'm Ben. Today we are going to venture towards the negative and we are going to talk about movies where the leads have no chemistry. You know, a lot of times this can ruin what otherwise might have been a good movie. A lot of times it's just part of a big bag of problems. Yeah, but it's systemic. These are these are some pairs of uh, romantic entanglements that just do not work for me. So, or they could be non-romantic. They could be. Yeah, Though they could be. I don't be. know if I picked any non-romantic ones. So. We're open to suggestions yeah. about buddy cop movies and such. But. Top five worst chemistry. Yeah. Okay, so my number five is a very recent film from a director that, in general, I quite uh, admire, but this was a terrible film, and that was A Dangerous Method, oh. wherein uh, I was supposed to believe that Michael Fassbender and Kieran Knightley were hot for each other, <laughs> oh, yes. uh, while they were both doing <clears throat> weird accents, and I mean, it just, I know there was supposed to be a little bit of awkward going on in those sex scenes, but there was really a lot of awkward going on. <laughs> to be fair to Cronenberg, there's always awkward in his sex scenes. Sure, like, but usually I believe that the people might actually want to be around each other, like in this Videodrome or something like that. Um, and then, speaking of non-romantic uh, entanglements as well, uh, every time Michael Fassbender and Viggo Mortensen were on scene yeah. together, how do you get those two men in a room chatting and make it so boring? I mean, it was just a terribly cast movie. Really, really terribly cast. Terribly written, too. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> it was. The screenplay Sorry. was a mess, an absolute mess. But Yeah, indeed. But anyways, we're anyway, not here to talk about that. Moving on. We are here to talk about top five worst chemistry. And so my number five is uh, Charlton Heston and Janet Lee in Touch of <laughs> Evil. I'm sorry, but... I know everyone I know. loves that movie. I love that movie, but they have terrible chemistry. I don't really think Charlton Heston is very effective as a romance. No, guy I ever. don't think so ever at all. Yeah, no, totally. And he doesn't for a second convince me that he truly loves his wife in that movie. And I don't really f feel that Janet Lee has that much chemistry with other leading actors as well. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like the two of them together are both kind of like polar opposites, you know driving each other away from each other and it it just unfortunately ruins it especially considering that so much of the suspense of the film is supposed to be built around uh her in captivity and him you know either not being aware of it or being aware of it and then wanting to get her back in some form or another and so the lack of chemistry there in a way kind of almost ruins that suspense at least for me but you mm -hmm. know but they were both famous <clears throat> They must have had chemistry together, right? I know, and he made such a great Mexican <laughs> in that movie, too. Oh, <clears throat> lots of movies with multiple problems. All yes. right. Speaking of two famous people who never should have been in a movie together, um, this movie, I feel like it's considered a minor classic, but I don't. I think it's terrible, and that is Picnic, starring William Holden and Kim Novak. Oh. Supposed to be a romantic. Yeah. And one of the reasons why this doesn't work is because they William Holden was... 37 when he was cast as someone who's supposed to be in his like mid 20s just mm. back from a war uh bad idea and i'm like a huge william holden fan but he didn't even look that young when he was that young they you know that all the time. yeah it's terrible and then kim novak was i think 22 when they made the film mm. and oh it's painful to watch them and they're supposed to be not just a couple but like a tortured couple who like shouldn't Com con shouldn't consummate this attraction and it's like what attraction like just because you're in a car together doesn't mean that you have any chemistry i almost picked actually kim novak and uh jimmy stewart oh, for yeah. uh, vertigo at actually. least that kind of goes with the storyline and then yeah it kind of does and i didn't pick it for other reasons but I did almost consider Kim another Novak is Kim another Novak. one of those yeah. actresses that was really sort of standoffish and didn't necessarily have romance. I mean, even though she yeah. was good, she didn't click with a lot of the leading men. In so. Indeed, I would agree. So I guess we're moving on. Yeah. All right, my number four is more of a modern film. It stars Sean Connery and Catherine Zeta-Jones. It's Entrapment. Oh, and, I kind of disagree on this one. Oh, man, I think they have... <laughs> terrible chemistry in that movie i'm sorry but john connery is so hot though he might I'm have been it. hot I'm gonna say it. <laughs> before but i don't know i would 
just my perspective on the situation. I don't think he's hot in that movie at all, <laughs> and I think he's kind of wooden, and he kind of phones in his performance, yeah. and I kind of felt that Catherine Zeta-Jones phoned in her performance, and those two things together did not convince me for a single second that they were romantically interested. I don't know. In it's not a great other. movie, and I might be in the minority in this one, but I just say, like, I don't know. They're, this is one where it's like, okay, you're both so beautiful that I buy it, kind of, but... Yeah, that doesn't do it for me. I, I, need, I need a little bit more than just the looks. I need, I need something under that surface. Okay, fair enough. All right, um... Number three, uh, I mean, this was going to be a terrible movie anyway because it's based off of terrible source material, but <laughs> who decided to put Tom Hanks and Audrey Chateau together in the Da Vinci Code? No. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Lord. Like, there's a lot of things wrong with that movie, starting with Tom Hanks' hair, but, I mean, the <laughs> I two of them it, having, of even, the even if there wasn't supposed to be sort of a romantic undertone, even just as, like detective partners they make no sense together on screen together mm. and it's just it's just a bad movie and which again i shouldn't be shocked by although really like i've read the book and it's horrific prose but there is sort of a good mystery in there at least a fun mystery it's formulaic and right? you would think that they would be able to make it into an entertaining movie but when you cast people who are just wooden against each other i mean yeah I say. That's what I say. Uh, well, another reason for me to not see it. Never need to see it. All right. Well, then, well moving on, we're just going to cover some uh, previous territory because my <laughs> number three is also A Dangerous Method oh, with Michael God. Fassbender and uh, <laughs> Kira Knightley. Kira Knightley, yes. And I'm, I'm usually a Kira Knightley uh, defender. I quite like her yeah, as an I actress. Think... I think people are unfair to her. But she, this was just like, why was she ever cast in this role? Like, why is anything why yeah. is anything that I'm watching happening in that movie? Yeah, so I bad? believe that she was a capable actress, I think, until I saw that movie. And now I'm kind of questioning <laughs> it. Uh, uh, it was Cronenberg just, who decided to let her try to do that accent and those mannerisms. And that opening sequence alone is just enough with her convulsing and the trying to talk and the oh, it's overacting to an extreme that it's... Isn't that Become how you parody. always begin to connect with your sexual partners? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. I do start to convulse and I <laughs> reach for my mouth a lot to bite my finger. It's not a pretty sight. <clears throat> if people haven't seen this movie, they must think that we're so weird right now. Yeah, I know. It's All right. Who yeah. knows? Okay, All I'll right. just offend people in a different way right now. <laughs> Who... I just don't buy Edward Norton and Rosario Dawson together in the 25th hour. And I am going to uh. go a step further and say that I never buy Edward Norton with anyone. I don't buy Rosario <laughs> Dawson with anyone myself. Fair enough but. there, but I guess I'm more perplexed by him because I don't really get why he is considered like a top-tier actor. I think he's really awkward with almost everyone he's ever acted here, yeah. before. Like, everyone he ever acts with, it's just so awkward. I mean, if you can't interact with other actors, how... I mean, it's not just a monologue-giving contest. No, totally. Well, that's why I think he works in Fight Club, is for all those reasons, actually. Yeah. <laughs> because it works for the character he's supposed to be and the situation he's in, because he's, you know, a complete loser and uh -huh. he's psychotic and whatnot. And so those kind of acting tendencies, I think, lend well to a person in that situation. Yeah. But that's just me. I mean, I'm not even I can't a stand fan of that movie, though. but like, Sorry. Uh, I mean, he's just, he should never be any sort of romantic lead. He shouldn't, he was been terrible in comedies, opposite people. Like Indeed. He, I don't yeah, buy yeah. him as being menacing what when he's it, trying to Woody Allen people? movie with him and Drew Barrymore? They have terrible chemistry in that film. Everyone says I love you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. Ed Norton. I don't get it. I'm sorry. Neither do I. So <laughs> there it is. All right. Well, moving on to my number two. It's kind of a given that this person would have bad chemistry, <laughs> but he not only has bad chemistry with one person in the film I'm about to mention, but two people in the <laughs> film I'm about to mention. And really, they're both capable, wonderful actresses, and they're beautiful. And how do you screw up <laughs> twice in one film? But that's Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> and the movie Total Recall with both Shannon, Sharon Stone and Rachel Ticotten. I mean, seriously, like, those are both great actresses, <laughs> and they, they're they both beautiful, uh, but he is so Arnold that uh, 
I don't know. He just he has no chemistry I don't in that really movie with them. I watch Arnold movies because he's gonna be a good actor. See, uh, yeah, well, that's, <laughs> this is true, and no one does. But I mean, <clears throat> I would at least expect a little bit of chemistry in the leads to you know with their romantic counterparts to some small degree and there's zero chemistry with him in any like the whole opening scene when Sharon Stone's trying to seduce him in bed after he's had a nightmare to the final line in the movie when Rachel Tocotten says to him well, you know if in case this is a dream you better kiss me quick before you wake up <laughs> I like that movie a lot. But, I love that but movie. Gross, right? But yeah, no, no, love that movie to death. But terrible chemistry. Okay, all right. My number one is another one that I feel like people might get mad because people love this movie. I don't like it much, but My Fair Lady with Audrey Hepburn and mm. Rex Harrison. Uh, he's about twenty some years older than her in this, and I mean, it's not like we're meant to believe that it's some great love story for the ages. But really, he has to take an investment in her because he's captivated by her, and she has to, you know, yep, agree yep. to stick around. And I just can't see those two ever wanting to spend any time together. <laughs> no, I kind of feel that way almost with Rex Harrison in like every film. Yeah, he's I'm not in. Really I love him. Oh, well, I love him as an actor, but he just doesn't jive well. Uh, what's that? The um, Preston Sturgis movie that he's in. Uh, that just played at, the, at Noir <laughs> City for for Sif, oh, and I'm totally remember. blanking on it right now. Anyways, I'm sorry. You can IMDb it. <laughs> I'll remember as soon as the video's done. But uh, he's great in that movie. But his chemistry with the females in the film is is as terrible at best, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, terrible at best. <laughs> Sorry, guy. You make a great actor, but not a romantic one. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of issues with just, like, the themes of My Fair Lady anyway, but uh, I love Audrey Hepburn, and I think that, you know, she was a little bit unique, so it's... it's she had great chemistry with some people and really weird chemistry with other people, and this was one of the big failures mm. for me, I think, so... Oh, Unfaithfully Yours. That's the movie <laughs> Good job. Yeah. I knew I'd... Anyways. So, okay. yeah. Moving on to my number, number one. one. I'm going with Star Wars Episodes <laughs> 2 and 3. Uh, I, Attack yeah. of the Clones and Revenge of the I Sith. I knew you would have this one. Yeah. So I didn't Hayden Christensen it. and Natalie Portman. You take the cake for having absolutely... Not just zero chemistry, but negative <laughs> chemistry. I'm not even sure how that works. But somehow they are able to take anything that could... <laughs> You know, flatten itself out to a point of nothing, and they concave it, and they make it, <laughs> they make it horrible. I mean, lines of like "I love you because you're so beautiful," or you know, what is it even? It's something terrible like that. You're so beautiful. That's why I love you, or something. I, uh, it shouldn't even actually we don't really need be to relived. Be trying to remember yeah, the no, it, in it, that indeed. Movie. I'm sorry that I just did that <clears throat> to you. I'm sorry I did that Natalie to us. Natalie Portman is <clears throat> another one where you know she is a great actress, very lovely. I like seeing her in things, but a lot of times she's not clicking with the other people on screen. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with her picking roles that maybe she doesn't buy into, and that maybe she's picking because of the exposure and the money she, that I they give her. A bit because cold. in some movies she's really good in them, and then in other movies she's not so good. Like she's great in the Black Swan. Yeah, but she's great in Black in Swan. The Star Wars films, she's literally as wooden and you know like mechanical as you can possibly get. Like she's just devoid of emotion. Sorry, Natalie Portman, if you're ever watching this. Don't take it personally. I yeah, mean, yeah. the whole movie is no, terrible. No, no, it's not your fault. It's George Lucas. His fault. Yeah. Oh, I did do that. Do take it personally, yeah. George. You, George. You can call me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, there's a ton more movies out there, and I'm sure there are much worse ones that I've just never bothered oh, to yeah, watch because sure. I've heard how terrible they are. So you should let us know what they are. Tell us your Indeed. top five. Uh, check us out on MacGuffinPodcast.com and on YouTube. We have a ton more top fives. We have all sorts of content on the site, and we would love to hear your comments. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.